I cannot wait to smoke these goat sausages. Let's stuff some goat sausage. Did you know that goat meat is the number one meat that is eaten in the whole world? It's a true statement. Look at the meat on that thing. Wow. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel here at Zion's Gate Ranch. Today we have something very special in store. I've been waiting to do this for so long. We are gonna make goat sausage. We're gonna take you guys through the whole process and show you how important it is to have Nigerian dwarf goats or any goats. So come along, let's make some smoked goat sausage. All right, so first things first is you've gotta have goat and you need goat to make goat sausage. So it's very important to have these kind of animals on your homestead. They provide delicious uh, cheese, milk, meat, and they're very easy to take care of. And you can have them in your own backyard. You don't need tons and tons of land. Um, especially like us, we have Nigerian dwarfs. Uh, they're a lot easier animal to work with. And I do highly recommend them, guys. So get you a Nigerian dwarf herd, get it started. And they're easy. Just start out with one or two and uh, give it a whirl. So you gotta have goat meat. Now let's check out the goat meat that we already have. Because we did butcher a weather around April. And I saved a ham and ribs and a neck roast. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grind all this up and we're gonna we're gonna make some sauce. So we're also going to mix beef tallow. Uh, we had butchered a steer. We're gonna mix beef tallow. You can use pork fat, beef tallow, or you know fat trimmings from a brisket or whatever you have. But you're gonna need some kind of fat because goats are lean. We have ourselves some beautiful organic, home-raised, homegrown Nigerian dwarf meat. Now, this was a weather that we butchered, and it's just so awesome, guys. We don't even buy meat from the store anymore. I mean, we eat our own food, and you will be so much more healthier in doing so. And can you look at how beautiful that looks? I mean, look at these ribs. Look at the red color in there. And he was fat, healthy, um, such good hay we have, and you know forage we give them they're just excellent excellent protein okay so we have ribs we have the ham this is actually the loin back strap I kept it with the ham I kind of butchered that cut it pretty decent I cut it in an interesting way let's put it that way so you could call these the chops it's just curved in there so when he was hanging up I cut it and then cut it out so that's kind of neat so anyways we're gonna debone this this is the neck, a neck roast. I was just gonna put like in a crock pot or something, but we're gonna make goat sausage. After this event, you are not gonna be disappointed. You're gonna wanna get some goats and you're gonna wanna get a sausage and a hoagie and some mustard and you're gonna eat. So <laughs> now, um, so the first things first is we're gonna let these stall out while we go do chores and once they're thawed out, we're going to come right back and we're going to get busy. So be back in a flash. Wow. All right, everybody. So the meat is thawed out after chores. It was very extensive chores this morning. We're getting ready to cut up the meat. And we're going to get all of our stuff ready, get you a sharp knife. And we're going to get ready to roll. So let's get all of our stuff together and let's do it. Let's get going. We're going to get this baby all through the, our grinder. You can use any kind of grinder you've got. We use a KitchenAid. I'm actually going to be getting a better one in the future, but that's what we've used for years and it works for us. All right, so we're gonna be using our KitchenAid grinder today. We don't have a whole lot of meat um, to do. So we're gonna start cutting up this goat ham right now. Deboning. Now you wanna make your pieces good. Go through the grinder. So, you know, like one inch pieces just 
just like that. <coughs> Throw it in our bowl. Just debone your goat. If you have any silver skin like this, you know, you can take some of that off. Um, get your knife under there and just take some of that off. And any kind of extra fat you can take off because um, we're going to be adding fat to it. You could put some in there, but it's not necessary. The beef fat's going to taste a whole lot better we're going to be using. The good thing about goat is, you know, all the trimmings you just give your dogs, you know. I mean, you don't have to be cooked like pork or something. I mean, you know, some people probably give their dogs pork, but uh, like deer, beef, lamb, goat. You know, you can eat raw, so your do dogs can eat raw safely. Pop, Snapple crack. We need to get all the meat off. Save your bones for stock. So you kind of get the point, just get the meat off. We're gonna do some ribs here in a second. And if you've never done ribs, take the meat off ribs, I'll show you how to do that. Real simple. That's like a clean bone. <laughs> so, anyways, this will make killer stock, guys. Put it in the freezer, save it for another day. Take some of this fat off because, like I said, we're adding fat, and I would rather eat beef fat than goat fat. It's not mad if you get a, some of it in there, it's natural, you know. We're about to show you guys how good goat really is gonna blow your mind raise goats they actually make really good manure too goats do and they eat a lot of your weeds on your property i mean if you watch your cows grazing you'll notice the cows will go eat the good stuff the goats come right behind them eating the stuff the cows don't so it really does work really well together to have both honestly but if you can't have cows and you just have a small property goats are definitely a great option i mean you got rich rich milk honestly nigerian dwarf milk is richer than my jersey milk and it makes better cheese too you know you could raise a nigerian dwarf goat on a, you know small land small amount of land it's a good thing about them and they're easy to deal with like i said before i mean it's like tending care taking care of a dog really i mean a bunch of dogs <laughs> <laughs> right, Miranda? You have a bunch of goats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have a bunch of goats like a bunch of dogs. Now, when you get to the ribs, you get them all clean looking like this. Uh, get some of that silver skin off, uh, always, if, if you can. It just helps. I, I, I think it helps. Get some of that off, just like a deer. Now, you're going to want to cut the meat out individually. There's still some loin here. Back strap on these. We're going to get that out, too. Just take your knife in between the ribs, go up. There's the piece of meat. You follow the other bone each time. Pull the ribs up. Snap it! <laughs> but see, then you get your meat off. Each one, try to do that. You know, we're trying to use the best of the animal. After you remove all these meat did you know the goat meat is the number one meat that is eaten in the whole world it's a true statement America is pretty small compared to the whole world you know a lot of other countries it's the number one meat that most people eat is goat. Hard to believe, knowing in America we don't eat it, they eat it that much. So, other countries, they're used to it like we're used to beef, you know? Mm -hmm. They eat goat on a daily basis. And, you know, like India and Africa, this is Nigerian dwarf, it's Africa. Um, you know, all Middle Eastern countries eat goat, Israel and Heck, the Muslims eat goat, uh, Christians eat goat, the Jews eat goat. It's a very well-known animal that a lot of different religions and a lot of different cultures and a lot of different people all eat goat. American 
It's just not real pronounced here yet, and I'm hoping that it, we will start moving towards that because if you know how to prepare it, it is absolutely just stunning meat to have. Very, very lean protein, and it's very healthy for you. All right, so when you're done with your ribs, you know they should look like this. You know you got as much meat as possible. Put it to stock. I save this for a neck roast. And we, this has already been very well cleaned before repackaged, by the way. Or I would definitely be cleaning this if you buy it from someone. But look at the meat on that thing. Wow. After you get your meat deboned off your goat, the next step is get you another bowl and get you a scale. You're going to need those items. Zero it out. There. Dump your meat in. Let's get a weight on this meat. Because we need a weight. All right, we're, you could say three and a half pounds. Let's just say that. All right, so the next step is, actually when you're done grinding that meat, put it in the fridge while you're doing other things because you want that meat cold before we start grinding. We're gonna figure up the fat ratio now. Now, figuring up the fat ratio can be tricky when you're dealing with uneven amounts like we're dealing with right now. So ounces seems to be an easier way to figure this up. Um, I'm not gonna go through all that right now. Um, if you have any questions on 70, 30, 60, 40, I mean, honestly, you need 70, 30, or 65, um, 35 um, in this sausage making event. Now, either one is fine. Depends on how much more fatty you're wanting. We're gonna go with 70, 30 right now. And we went with ounces to figure up that amount. So if you do it in ounces, it's it's a lot easier. So today we're gonna to be doing 23 ounces to our three and a half pounds of meat, which puts us almost at five pounds. So another pound of fat. So when we butchered our steer, we uh, got beef fat back. And Paletti Custom Meats, our butcher, gave us this. So it's grinded gr or ground um, tallow. And this is gonna be awesome for the goat. So we have lots of bags of these, you know, and that comes in handy when you raise cows. If you don't raise cows, you can always use pork fat or you can go to your local butcher. You can get um, suet, or which comes from the kidney area. Your local butcher will have some, so just check that out there. So we're gonna go to 23 ounces and cut us off a chunk of this fat. With your knife, just like that. We're going to put it on the scale. It's 10. Now we need to switch to ounces. That's close enough. Close enough. After you get your fat weight up, what we're going to do is when you drop the meat in, drop some fat in. Drop the meat in, drop some fat in and then it will evenly grind it, and that's the next step. Okay, so we have the LEM hog casings, natural hog casings. You can get casings online. LEM has lots of different kinds, sheep casings. Uh, we'll leave a link in the description for these. Highly recommend LEM products. They're fantastic. They have so many different kinds, and this is a 32 millimeter, so it's a, it's a decent size, like a brat size. When they come, they come salted, um, if you don't use them all, you need to, to drain the water off of them after you're done and re-salt with your salt. They have to be salted before they go back in the fridge. So what we're going to do is we're just going to dump all the casings in a strainer. You're just going to rinse all the casings off. This should be perfect for what we're getting ready to do because we don't have a lot to do. We're going to get all that salt off. And when they come, they come salt. You'll have to do the same thing. Wash the salt off. Be the salt of the earth. Be the light of the earth. <laughs> That's what Jesus said, be the light of the earth. What is salt if it loses its flavor? Everybody loves salt. Wouldn't it suck if everybody was salty? <laughs> <laughs> all right, rinse them real good and then shake them dry and pat them and all that stuff. All right, after you've rinsed them off, let's just sit them in a, just a cold bath. 
let them sit there while we're finishing up the grinding. Just let them soak in this. It kind of rehydrates them is what it does. All right, so I'm gonna t want to stop the train here and talk about curing. Celery juice powder is a natural nitrate. So it turns nitrate into nitrites. There's a little bit of science behind it and it prevents bacteria or botulism forming in your meat. Now, uh, USDA obviously does not approve of this. Um, a lot of sausage making people do. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people know that this does work. Um, if you're concerned about smoking lower with a real cold smoke at 150, you need to use pink salt. Uh, but we like to keep things more organic around here. Um, keep things more healthy for your body that's not chemically made. This is the uh, dosage that we are using for this recipe. It's 0.67 ounces per 10 pounds of your meat. That's with your fat ratio, your meat, everything weighed up together. This will actually give it the cure taste. Um, I've been smoking sausages at 200 with nothing in it. This will definitely cure your meat, like like I said, like a ham or, or et cetera, but it will help with n no bacteria. I highly recommend using this. It's organic and it's on Amazon. We'll leave a link in the description. So today we're gonna to be using 0.32 ounces due to the weight of what we're using. So you kinda of gotta use a little bit of math. If you are struggling with that, just leave it in the comments. We'd love to help you out. Um, let's do it. We'll just get it to 0.3, that's it. Now, we got that weight out. I know this seems like a lot. Just hold on, it's gonna get good. You need to cut up this fat so it's easy to put in this grinder. You really want to watch how much meat you have and how much fat you have so you don't run at the end just with nothing. That wasn't too bad at all. I mean, isn't it beautiful? It looks very well mixed in. So now the next step is we're going to dump this into a bowl. And if I didn't mention already, you want to make sure this meat was very cold and the fat was pretty much came out of the freezer. The colder this thing is, the better that thing grinds. If you didn't already know that, let's dump this into our bowl and let's get to mixing our seasonings in next. So in the meantime, while we're getting our seasonings ready, we're gonna dump this in a bowl, put it in the fridge. Okay, so we got all of our seasonings rounded up, gathered up, and bowled up. Now we're getting ready to mix them up. I know it sounds like a lot, but let's go through the seasonings and see what we're fixing to add to our goat sausage. We have kosher salt. We have black pepper. We have smoked paprika. Now, I just wanna talk about that for a second. You don't have to use smoked paprika. You can use regular. Today, I'm using smoked, because I would just want to. It's up to you, just play with it. Garlic, granulated garlic, just garlic, organic garlic powder is what that is. Red pepper flakes. Fennel, ground fennel. If you cannot find ground fennel, use a mortar and pestle and just smash it. That's what we did. Our store don't ever have it. And then we have celery powder in the middle for nitrate. That's going in. And then we have brown sugar. This is going to make it delicious. You got to have the brown sugar. What's the next step? Get your goat meat. Take your hand or your finger, like you're painting. Just mix this all up. Just mix it up and pour it in. Dump it on your goat meat. Just like that. All right, so we'll just add our brown sugar. We don't love the brown sugar. You gotta have that. Just to mix the seasonings in well. We're gonna grind this again with the same coarse grind just so the seasonings get really mixed in. It's gonna make it more tender, it? Yeah, it's gonna make it a little more tender. It's gonna make it, if the goat meat can be, you know, it can be not as like pork or something like that. So we're gonna definitely grind this again.
Now, you can see as why we ran this through the grinder twice. Now, look at the difference. This is, this is ground once. This is ground twice with all the seasonings mixed in. Rule of thumb with sausage making. You need 10% of your weight of the meat with water. A lot of guys could use ice while they're grinding it, which also keeps it cold and also adds moisture. Um, it gives it that plump taste, that plump pop when it comes to a sausage. You're adding moisture into it and it really does work well. But what we're gonna do is, we're gonna add 10% water to our mixture. The goal is we want this very tacky very tacky almost where you pick the meat up and it sticks to your hand that's what we're after and let's just start working this meat you want it tacky you don't want it looking like it's you want it looking like it's worked it'll take you a minute just to work blend it all together till it looks like sausage you want it looking like sausage. Work, when you work the meat, you're actually working in proteins. And it becomes where they start clabbering together, you know, and they start wanting to stick. And that's what you want with sausage. Sausage link making. That's what you want. If you skip this step, it could be a little crumbly, you know, when you bite in you have a crumbliness to it this is gonna make it like sausage so a lot of the butchers have big mixers you know I'm just showing you here at home what you have and what you can use if you don't have all that equipment and that's what we're doing today you don't need all it makes it nice to have that stuff but not all of us have that stuff so we're showing you what you got to do if you don't have that stuff Hey, look, it's almost where it's sticking to my hands. So work that meat till your cat's getting on the table. You can smell it. Goat meat. It, it, it's sticky. You want it sticky. There, look. That's what you want. See it sticking? Mm -hmm. It's there. Wash up after this. Maybe even... I don't wear gloves because I'm not a wuss. <laughs> All right, we are now at the step that we are ready to stuff some sausages. It's tacky, it smells good, it's, it's awesome. So now, we have our stuffer set up right here. We have olive oil, big tip that I learned. It does work really well. And get yourself a nice stainless pan from Walmart or wherever. I got this one at Walmart. Stick it under there, that works fantastic. Get yourself some olive oil, just put it in the lid like that. And then come over the top and just rub it on here. This is going to allow that casing to really slide on there a lot easier. Another trick that I do recommend is add a little water on your tray. It's like this. A little. So them sausages, when they come out, they kind of just slide around. So you can turn them. Find the end to your casing. Alright, so get it on your... Get your Get your casing on. See why I added olive oil? Slides real good. Now, see this? It'll get to one side. If it does that, pull to the left side. See how it just slides right on? Tie your knot. Come out as far as you can because you don't waste that casing. Pull tight. They're pretty strong. We are farmers. We have lots of pigs. We have cows. We have goats. We used to have sheep. We have a lot of animals running around here. So we have lots of needles. You can buy yourself a sausage sausage prick. They sell them. You know, they come like a little three pin prick. Um, we just use a needle. It's so easy. So if you start getting an air bubble, pop it. Before you even get started, you're gonna wanna take your needle or your sausage pricker out right here at the end, because when you first stuff it, it's gonna get filled with air. So get you one, bang. One hole, two hole, three hole. If you see another little air pocket, just punch a hole. Here comes our meat. So, don't be in no hurry. It's a little out of time, especially if you're by yourself. Grab a little more meat. If you have a sausage stuffer, you gotta crank them. 
So see how it goes directly in the hole. Grab two hands here, finger. I usually just use my fingers or like this. And let it slowly start working its way out. And if you need to push back in to make it tighter, you can do that. See what I mean? See how tight that is? You don't want no air pockets. That's the beauty about making sausages. You can add whatever you want. Broccoli if you want it. See how I'm just squeezing like this to the length that I want? I want about this much length. So just kind of put pressure on it slightly, slightly. Just keep doing that till you get a hand that wants to meet, and then wham. One, two, wrap that baby up. Three, four, five, I guess. And then you want to come to the next one and go the opposite way. Opposite way that you just went. You got yourself two links, just like that. Three links. We're going to stop there. And sometimes you'll get to the end like that, and you're going to have to tie, stop and tie it. And see, I went this away. I'm going this away. So the next one's going to go the opposite way. You can grab it and just flip it. Three, four, five. Go to the next one. Twist. Go the opposite way. Pinch. One. You gotta flip them all around. Two, three, four, five. You can actually pinch this off right here and just twist. You'll make a big hoagie there. And then see, you can keep going. I'm just trying to use it as an example. You can twist them as you go. And a lot of guys say that's easier for beginners. Just twist them as you go. Only fill it and twist. Fill it and twist. Goat sausages, guys. Look at this. Not hard at all. You get the hang of it after you start doing it. And then we're going to twist this one this way. Okay, everyone. So out of five pounds, we got about 17 sausages. I think that's what that is, isn't it? About 17 nice goat sausages. So now at this point, you want to put these in the fridge overnight. Pat dry them if you can. You don't want a bunch of liquid at the bottom of a bowl. You want, to, you want the cure to have its way. You want the seasonings to have its way. You want to put this in the refrigerator overnight. Tomorrow, after chores, we're going to light up the smoker and we're going to get these babies rolling. And what a lot of guys will do is they'll pull them out of the refrigerator, make sure they're pat dry, and they'll even put them over a fan Get them dry and clip each section. That way they go on the grill real nicely. And we might do that tomorrow. Um, because when you put them on here, they're all lingled together and stuff. It's a lot easier to have them dry. When you, The reason of drying them out helps the skin. And you can clip these off without any sausages coming out. Because they get dry and they, they squeeze up. So we're probably going to do that tomorrow. We'll catch you guys back in the morning. And this is going in the refrigerator to marinate. Really, that's what's going on. It's marinating. So we'll see you in the morning. Okay, welcome back, everybody. It is the next day to the sausage making. Not any sausage. Goat sausage. Now, let's get the sausage out. Look at these babies, y'all. Is it me, or do those look amazing? Okay, everybody. So this is what I use to light my smoker. These babies, called Fatwood billy buckskin um they come in a big box this is what you need to fire your smoker that's it stop wasting money on all that charcoal trust me 
get you some of these. I'll leave a link in the description. Use the link. It helps us out on the farm. And guys, trust me, you will be satisfied that you got these. Once I started using these, I never looked back. Okay, y'all, we are out here at the smoker. We are coming at you live from the Ozarks. Look at this sky. Look, at this. it's just so beautiful. It's so nice out here. It's freaking blazing. The humidity and the heat is kicking, and that is a part of Missouri. <laughs> okay, let's get to smoking, guys. We got our sticks, okay? I told you about these sticks. Trust me, you need these in your life. Uh you'll save so much money guys you'll save so much money use the link in the description trust me you'll thank me later these are awesome let's get to smoking take your torch and just light it light your sticks 10 to 15 minutes it's gonna be a bed of coals no more charcoal guys Wash it out. Get yourself some water. We have a hot water hose bib on the side of my house. I highly recommend putting a hot water hose bib on your house. That should be another video. Ugh. Anyways, we got our water. Let's go back to the smoker. Man, is it freaking hot out here. Tell me them don't work. All right, we'll be back when it's a bed of coals. Did you guys look at these goat sausages? welcome back it's been two hours since we put the sausage on it is so hot out here i think i'm freaking melting i mean my phone was in the chair and it said overheating would not work i mean it's got to be freaking hot to do that the ozark sun no joke okay i mean the my tell truth thermometer is peeling <laughs> It's freaking hot, y'all. So, anyways, let's check on these sausages before we get sunburn. And <laughs> this thing is rocking. See how I'm doing this fire? Over to the right. Just a log and maybe a little cherry crossways like that. You want that first log sideways because you don't want air coming underneath of it. You get air coming underneath of it, two of them sideways, they're going to burn hot and fast. You need it this way, not this two of them this way you need this way oh my god wow goat sausages what do you guys think what are y'all thinking in your minds when you look at this i'm thinking snap pop on a bun mustard Holy moly, they look good. I mean, they're even better in person, guys. They look done. So let's take another closer look. Oh, they look great, y'all. Buy uh, goat sausages. I've been trying to tell y'all this was coming. Now it's time to put them in an ice bath. We don't have ice out here. So what we're gonna do is, cause I didn't want it melting. Look at them sausages, y'all. Stop playing. Y'all don't even know about goat meat, okay? Wait till you had goat meat the right way. Whoa, baby, throw them in there. We're gonna go inside and put these on an ice bath. Be right back. Okay, everybody, we are back inside with the goat sausages now ain't these amazing you if you could smell my house you would go nuts right now i mean this is awesome I mean, a few shrinkage but they're awesome so let's get some ice and put these babies in that ice bath dump it on there we don't want it cooking no more we want it to stop cooking now all right, guys, so it's been five minutes. That's all you need in the ice bath. We're going to dump the ice and start cutting sausage links. Look at them babies, y'all. Goat sausage. What do you think, Miranda? What do you think? I don't know. Don't they look good? They look delicious, guys. 
We're going to fry one up for a taste tester. All right, we have the sausage cut. Let's take an innermost piece. Let's try it. Goat sausage. Mm. Wow. It's delicious. I don't think you could tell much from beef. It tastes to me like beef or venison. It's right where beef is slash venison. And the casing is delicious. I mean... The grind, the seasoning. If I was going to say anything, I think it might need a tad more salt. Other than that, wow. Wow. Now let's see what Miranda thinks. All right, let's see what you think, Miranda. It's very it has good. It a really good texture. It has a good texture, I thought too. Casings not bad. I'm not always a fan of casings in general. I kind of like the natural intestines better. It doesn't taste like goat. Really. Not at all. No. Like I said, I think it tastes the between beef and deer is what I thought. I think the seasonings mask it because I think you really taste like the fennel in it. And... Maybe the beef fat, the tallow, probably kind of helps mask it because it doesn't taste goaty at all. It tastes really good. I yeah, like it. It's lovely. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, guys, how awesome is that? Especially when you, and this is just tasting it raw, but once you get it on a, a bun, a bun with, with some, a snap, with some mustard. Yeah. I mean, come on. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's real yeah. good. I like it. Yeah, I would say... Goats are really easy to raise. They're cheap. You can raise them on a small amount of land, and you can make really delicious sausages. So, for me, and they're easier to raise than pigs, too. They are. And it's a healthier meat, right? It's, it's a leaner way healthier. meat. And if you're mixing in pork fat, that's fine, or beef tallow, that's fine. But It's a more lean meat. It is really good. So, yeah. I, I love it. All right, so we're fixing to put the goat sausage on a cracker with some cheese. Let's try it out. Oh no. All right, so we got the toppings, we got the bread, we got the hoagie. We're about to eat our goat sausage, y'all. Ketchup and spicy mustard. Mmm. So good. Tastes between beef and deer, right in the middle. Do you recommend playing around with it and see more things, how you may like it? You can stuff it with cheese, you can stuff it with broccoli, you can stuff it with other things, and it'd be delicious. So guys, goat sausage, it was fantastic. Miranda even likes it, right Miranda? Yes. It's good cold, cut up in slices <laughs> on cheese and crackers. It's delicious, it tastes like, I mean, it's fantastic guys. We love you guys. See you again soon on the next video. We have more videos coming. Check out our other videos. Please like, share, and subscribe. Check us out later on, guys. We love you. Peace. Who's ready to make some sausage with daddy? <laughs> I've worked so hard for this one piece of sausage, and my wife has put me in timeout. <laughs> now you can eat. <laughs> now I can eat, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs>